Okay, so what I want to talk about now is a famous probability brain teaser that you always see when you're just learning about conditional probability, and it's called the Monty Hall problem. And it's named that because there is this TV show called Let's Make a Deal, and it was hosted by this guy named Monty Hall. Um, but now I guess in the US it's hosted by Wayne Brady. Anyway, setup is the following. So you have three doors numbered one, two, and three. Behind one of these doors is a new car, and behind the other two doors are loser prizes like goats, okay? And the setup is that you're the contestant. You choose a door. You don't know what's behind it yet, but you've chosen door number one. You think that's where the car is, right? Now the host opens door number three, and shows you a goat. And the puzzle is, should you switch to door number two? And that's the part that is counterintuitive, because it seems like just knowing that there's some other door that doesn't have the car behind it, how could that change the uh, probability of door number one containing the car? Uh, should you switch or not? Turns out that you should switch, definitely, um, but it's so counterintuitive that I remember that when I was a kid, this was like a brain teaser in the newspaper and people wrote in, you know, to say it's crazy, you shouldn't switch, it doesn't matter. Um, and there have been pe papers written about it and lots of famous and smart people have gotten mixed up about this problem. But it turns out with, with simple conditional probability, you can show for sure why you should switch. So let's do that. So I think the easiest way to do it, of course, there are like a zillion Monty Hall videos online. And so uh, if you don't like mine, you can find some other one. But I think the easiest way to understand it is to quickly make a table of the door that the car is actually behind, the door that the host opens, and the probability of the host opening that door given where the car is, right? So we're kind of making a table of conditional probabilities. And so there are three doors where the car could be, and there are three possibilities for each door where the host might open, okay? And some of these things that we're gonna see are not possible, right? So you pick door number one. Okay, so the host is never gonna open door number one, right? The whole point is to tempt you to switch or not, right? So definitely under no circumstances is the host gonna open your door to show you what's inside, right? The only thing he can do is open up a door where the goat is, right? So in the first case, you pick number one, that's actually where the car is. Now the host has the option of either opening number two or number three to show you a goat. Doesn't really matter to him. So let's suppose that each of these things is probable with probability one half, okay? Now, you pick number one. If the car is actually behind number two, then clearly the host can't open that door to show you the car. He can only open number three to show you a goat, right? So he's not gonna open number two, he's only gonna open number three, okay? Now, conversely, if the car is actually behind number three, he can't open number three, he has to open number two. So only when the car is actually behind your door does the host have a little bit of a choice about what other door to open. Otherwise, there's only one remaining door that has a goat behind it that the host is able to open, okay? So now let's compute uh, what is the probability of uh, car equals two given the host opens three, right? This is basically the answer of should you switch, right? If this number is greater than a half, then we should definitely switch. So we can figure out what this is by Bayes rule, right? This is the probability that the car equals two and the host opened three over the probability that the host opened three, okay? And I can expand this even more to say, okay, the denominator is the same, or I'm sorry, the numerator is the same. And I'm going to, um, have to abbreviate a little bit. So this is like saying the probability that car equals one given that, um, whoops, the other way around. Probably that the host equals three given the car equals one times the probability of the car equals one plus the probability that host equals three given the car equals two times the probability of the car equals two plus the probability the host 
equals 3 given the car equals 3 the probability of the car equals 3 okay all these things are gettable from the table that I drew on the previous slide right so I know that the probability that the car equals 2 and the host equals 3 right so that's like saying um, well actually let's do the bottom part first so let's look at our table okay the probability that uh, the car is equal to 1 is a third and under that circumstance the probability that the host opens um, door number 3 is a half right the probability that the car is in door number 2 is a third the probability that the host opens door number 3 in that case is 1 he has to open door number 3 the probability that the car is under door number 3 is a third but the probability that the host opens door 3 is 0 right he can't open it because he's not going to show you that's where the car is right and this number in the numerator is exactly um, the same as this this piece here right so now I can compute that on the uh, top I have a third on the bottom I have a sixth plus a third plus zero so I have um, one third over one half which is two thirds so this is saying that I definitely should switch right because there's a two-thirds probability that the host was forced to open door number three because the car was under door number two so there are many many variations on this in terms of like you know is the host forced to open a door or not or can the host choose which door to open if there are many choices there are lots of, of variations on this but the upshot is that no matter what the rules of the game are actually it's always at least as good to switch as it is to stick where you are so if you want to learn more about this problem there's lots of academic articles about it and there's lots of videos that will probably demonstrate with videos you know cars and goats so hopefully you can fool your friends with this great party trick <laughs>